Hello everybody, welcome to Bedtime Stories from Berkswell. Uh, I hope you're all safe and well um, and sitting comfortably. Um, so this is something that we're going to going to have a go at for the next few weeks. If it's popular, then we'll do some more of them. 6.30 of a Friday evening, we're going to read you a story. This week's story is called Miles and the Screwdriver. Now, if you have a Miles in your household, like we do, um, you may well recognise some of the characteristics of Miles in this story, because he... Uh, can be a little bit naughty but first of all my name is steve this is miles faith and zoe um, if any of you would like us to say hello or if you've got a birthday coming up or just passed do please comment in the comment section and we'll try to say hello to as many of you as we can um, at the end of the story um, I hope you've got your, uh, your teddy bears to hand ready for a cuddle. So we'll introduce our bears for now. So, so this is Cuddles. This is Clark. This is Uni. This is Unietta. And this is Huxtable. And as you can tell, we're very imaginative <laughs> with, uh, with names of bears in, uh, in our house. So, Miles and the Screwdriver by Taffy Davies. I'll be sitting comfortably. Then we'll begin. <clears throat> Miles was a pain in the neck, but he could not help liking him, for life was never dull when he was around. One day he found an old screwdriver and began to experiment. First of all, he took the little screw out of his pencil sharpener just to see how it worked. It fell to bits. Never mind, said Miles. I'll put it together tomorrow. Then he took the screws out of the other toys in his room just to see how they worked. They all fell to bits. Never mind, said Miles. I'll put them together tomorrow. Then he went downstairs and took all of the screws out of the telephone. It fell to bits. Never mind, said Miles. I'll put it together tomorrow. Before long, Miles had taken the screws out of the washing machine, the television, the refrigerator, the toaster, the stereo, the cooker, his bicycle, the iron, the radio, his dad's camera, and lots of other things. Never mind, said Miles, looking at all the bits. I'll put them all together tomorrow. Go to bed, roared Miles' father when he came home from work and saw the mess. He was furious. Someone had even taken the screws out of the front door. It had fallen on him when he had tried to open it. But that night, Miles could not sleep. He crept downstairs and began taking a few more screws out. He took all the screws out of his father's car. It fell to bits. Then he took all the screws out of the garage walls. That too fell to bits. Then Miles started to undo all the screws holding the house together. The following morning, when Miles' mum and dad woke up, they felt something was wrong. The house was all wobbly. Miles! they shouted. There was a big crash, and to their horror, the whole house just crashed around their ears. Suddenly, they were sitting in the street. All the neighbours turned out to see what the fuss was about. And seeing Miles' mum and dad in the street, they began to laugh. But they soon stopped as crash, bang, clatter. Up and down the street, houses were falling apart. It was Miles and his screwdriver. Stop him, they all shouted. Quick! Fetch the police! As soon as the police arrived, they all decided Miles had better go and see a special doctor who lived in London. So they put him in a police car and started off towards the railway station. Crash! Bang! Tickle! The police car fell to bits in seconds. Miles had taken all the screws out. 
Miles thought London was great. There were so many screws to undo. He took all the screws out of Big Ben, St Paul's Cathedral, Buckingham Palace, the Post Office Tower, Nelson's Column, all the underground trains, and he was about to start on the buses when someone stopped him. Miles, we're going to have to send you to America to see a very special doctor, said a policeman. Come on, I'll walk you to the airport. When they reached the airport, there were hundreds of people all shouting at Miles. He just waved his screwdriver at them. Send him on Concord, shouted a man in the crowd. Great idea, they all agreed. Oh no, oh please no, wailed the pilot of Concord. Send him by boat, please. But it was no good. The plane took off with Miles on board. By the time they reached America, all that was left of Concord was one engine, two seats and a wheel to land on. Miles had been busy. Thank you for a lovely flight, said Miles to the pilot. The pilot did not reply, but a great big tear rolled down his cheek. Miles thought America was wonderful. It was just full of things to undo. He set to work with his screwdriver. Buildings, bridges, buses, boats, nothing was safe. Miles was having a whale of a time. America was just falling to bits. Somehow, after wandering for some time, Miles found himself at the North Pole, right at the top of the world. He blinked with surprise, for there, in the middle of the North Pole, was the biggest screw he had ever seen, going down into the centre of the earth. Carefully, Miles started to climb up the screw. Just what do you think you are doing? said a loud voice above him. Uh, just undoing this screw, um, to find out how the world works, said Miles. Not quite sure where the voice was coming from. Why? said the voice. Uh, I don't really know why, said Miles, not very happily. Because I want to, I suppose. And what about all the mess? said the big voice. Oh, I'll clear that up tomorrow, of course, said Miles. Miles, said the voice firmly. If you undo that screw, there will be no tomorrow. Everything will have fallen to bits. Now you listen very carefully to me. I made the earth. And if you want to know how things work, start by asking me. Miles looked down at the ground and began to feel very sorry for himself. Don't worry, said the earth maker. Just go and tidy up your mess. Then we'll talk again tomorrow. OK, said Miles, feeling a bit better inside. So home Miles went, putting all the screws back. It took quite a bit of time, and by the end of the day, he was pretty tired. Miles was ready for bed. As he lay down on the pillow, he felt something hard pushing against his ear. It was one little screw that had been left over. Oh no, I wonder where that has come from, he groaned. I wonder too. Can you see? Miles was so excited about taking the world to bits to find out how it worked that he forgot about all of the problems he was causing with his mess. It was only when he met the earth maker that he realised how silly and selfish he had been. The Earth is a very small planet which we all have to share. It's very easy to spoil someone else's life by thinking only of ourselves. When Jesus lived on Earth, he showed people how to love and care for each other. Above all, Jesus shows us how much God loves the world that he has made and how much it cost him to save us from spoiling it with our greed and selfishness. I hope you enjoyed the story there. 
So we've got some people to say hello to. So, Faith, who are you saying hello to? All my friends and family from Birkswell, Mrs Drew and Mrs Parker from Birkswell School. Mr Pye, Chris, Janet, Ida and Ruth. Okay. And um, and Granny. And Granny. Okay. Miles, have you got anyone to say hello to? Seth, Oscar, Alicia, Miles and Miles and Harriet. Yes, and Harry. Okay. And Mrs. Connell. And Mrs. Connell. Okay. <laughs> Marvellous. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the story. If you have, please do comment and, uh, and let us know. Uh, let us know if you thought it was good. So there's four books all together in the Miles series. Um, I think next week we're going to read Miles and the Computer. So we'll see what sort of mischief we can get up to um, with Miles next week with his computer. Um, just a quick hello to John and Gosha. Um, and to Pavel and Yannick. Um, so if we're all ready for bed, get hold of your bear. Squeeze them tight. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night.